morning and welcome to the Medina County Board of Commissioners. Uh, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In our prayer for the morning, Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligations. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Amen. Steve, can I have a motion to approve? Minutes? Sure. M move to approve the minutes of November 30th. Second. Get a motion and a second. Any questions or discussions, corrections? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweaty? Yes. Hudson? Yes. I almost said roll call, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be honored. <laughs> okay, we will move into our resolutions this morning. And first up, we have Amy Lyon Galvin, our assistant county administrator. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. I have 11 resolutions for your consideration this morning. The first one is amending the appropriation measure resolution. The second is amending the 2021 appropriations resolution by transferring appropriations. The third is expenditure adjustments for various funds. The fourth is cash transfers for the costs of the countywide audit and various funds. The fourth, oops, excuse me, fifth is authorizing the purchase of 5,600 gallons of regular unleaded gasoline for the engineering center, and that went to Cuyahoga Landmark at the lowest bid price of $2.419 per gallon. The sixth resolution is declaring Medina County property as excess property. The seventh is approving the amendment number one to the agreement with Aramark Correctional Services Incorporated. This is their annual adjustment for food services at the Medina County home. The eighth resolution is amending the bylaws of the Medina County Drug Advisory Committee, also known as MCDAC, and adopting the grant guidelines and the application for fiscal year 2022. The ninth resolution is approving a memorandum of agreement between the Medina County Office for Older Adults and the Suprema Senior Center Cafe. Uh, this is going to be operated then by, um, I know it's in here, Medina Creative, Medina County Creative Housing and Affiliate. The tenth resolution is allowing expenses of county officials. And the final resolution is approving claims for the week in the amount of six hundred and four thousand one hundred ninety-two dollars and nine cents. Uh, move to approve the eleven resolutions. Second. Get a motion and a second. Any questions? Um, I just the gas bid. It surprises me that out of uh, eight or so entities, we only had two actual bids. And. The folks did say that it's becoming more challenging to guarantee the delivery. So we normally call the night before, get the pricing, they leave us a message or call in the morning and then we can make that decision. But just again with delivery commitments sure. and so forth, it's been challenging. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, roll call please. Hambly? Yes. Sweaty? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, next up we have Holly Murin, our human resources director. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have five new hires, one at Job and Family Services, two in maintenance, and two in transit, one promotion in transit, ten rate increases, five in sanitary, one in building, one at the county home, one at office for older adults, and two at Job and Family Services, one rate correction in building, one leave of absence at Job and Family Services, one return from leave at Job and Family Services, Three resignations, two at transit and one in building, a change in retirement and sanitary, and a retirement and sanitary. Uh, move to approve. Second. Got a motion to second. Any questions? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweaty? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, thank you. Next up, we have Jeremy Cinco, our sanitary engineer. Morning, everyone. Good morning. 
Uh, five resolutions for consideration today. Uh, the first is authorizing the purchase of a Caterpillar C8 diesel generator for the Spieth tank water pumping station. There's a 40-week uh, lead time on that material, so we were hoping to get that moving. Uh, the second is declaring the necessity to extend an existing sanitary water main along Center Road within Liverpool Township and authorizing the sanitary engineer to commence advertising for construction bids. This was a customer-driven project. Uh, the third one is authorizing change order number two for the Medina Road uh, State Route 18 water main relocation project for Express Underground. That was in uh, to ODOT's road widening project, and that's just to balance out the co uh, contract quantities. The fourth is declaring the necessity to relocate an existing sanitary sewer along Heather Hedge Drive within Lafayette Township and authorizing the sanitary engineer to commence advertising for construction bids. We're hoping to get that advertised in the mid to late January. And the final one is authorizing the sanitary engineer to purchase an international single cab and chassis and hook lift, hook lift hoist truck through uh, state purchasing. This is part of the Ohio Diesel Mitigation Grant through the EPA. Um, this is the second of two awarded vehicles. I move to approve the five resolutions. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any questions? Uh, Jeremy, one question just on the yes. Heather Hedge uh, relocation. Mm -hmm. That is for the uh, EMA. EMA building. That is right? correct. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Swedig? Yes. Hudson? Yes. All right. We will move on into our department updates. Uh, first off, we have Greg Brown from our county home. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Starting with our census, uh, we're currently at 40 residents. Um, however, uh, due to skilled care, we will be losing one uh, in January. As far as staffing goes, uh, this month we just had our uh, intermittent second shift staff uh, LPN start, which was excellent. We're still looking for full-time second shift and part-time first and second shift LPNs. Um, we've had a, a, amazing outpouring from the uh, Medina County residents at the home but throughout the year, but of course during this time especially, um, food, uh, monetary gifts, it's been really amazing. Um, a lot of the events that the residents have been having, I always put them on fa our Facebook page, so if you want to see what's happening at the uh, county home, go to the Facebook page. Um, the Thanksgiving meal was amazing. Aramark put out another great spread. There was a uh, only one resident that I know of that actually could finish the second plate so <laughs> yeah I posted a picture of that you have to see it to believe how big that first plate was um, for December events uh, one December marks um, the clutter Christmas party kicked off another great event for the residents uh, December 2nd the uh, Santa's rain dogs uh, hosted by the best pause forward therapy dogs came in that was a really neat event the, the 15th of December we have um, the Friends of Medina County Home and the Rotary, uh, they provide a meal from Pickle Mamas for the residents, something really special, nice nice uh, tablecloths, you know, make that a really special time. And then the the biggest note, the biggest change for the home right now is starting yesterday, the, uh, the home went to uh, masks, again, staff and visitors coming in as well. The signs have been posted at the doors. It's the same time as it was last year when everything was, was hot and provide care for our residents, I, I have to make sure that we're, we're protecting them. That's all I have. Excellent. Very good. Thanks, Greg. Thank, Thank you. you. Denise, Denise, there she is. Uh, next up, we have Denise Testa from our Planning Services Department. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so um, getting right into the numbers. So for the end of the year, we're looking at 33 major subdivisions and close to 1,360 new sublots coming into the county, uh, 41 minor subdivisions with 83 sublots. So that puts us at a total of nearly 1,450 new sublots just in Medina County. So we're very excited to work with our townships and our developers on that. Um, regarding the Planning Commission, so for January, we are looking at a replat, reviewing a replat in Liverpool Township and a final plat in Sharon Township. So it's a little light compared to our November meeting. Um, and we will also hold our officer elections. 
uh, for that as well. Um, we are all planning on attending the Medina County Township Association dinner next week, so we're looking forward to seeing some of our colleagues that we haven't seen in person for a while at that. Um, we were approved for the NOACA EV, uh, electric vehicle charging station program, so you'll most likely uh, be seeing some um, paperwork come through that I might need signed as well as for our CHIP grant as in addition to us in the city of Wadsworth we were uh, both approved for our CHIP grant so we're very excited to see that come through as well and then uh, tomorrow night I'm looking forward to presenting a uh, planning and zoning workshop in Westfield Township uh, so looking forward to that would you like to talk about the Hinckley memo right now yes, or sure. do you want to do that in discussion Sure. okay so <clears throat> I did um, give you a, 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 um, a consider four-year consideration um, regarding the Hinckley Township Comprehensive Plan update. They have requested uh, $3,500 to assist with um, a total uh, to assist with the, the total cost of seven thousand five hundred dollars to update their comprehensive plan um, as you probably know Hinckley is a very active township with development um, they are um, very much um, a partner with the Planning Commission and um, as a result of the increased development in Hinckley I believe that this comprehensive plan update is very important not only for their community but also for our builders and developers as well so it is my recommendation to award them the three thousand five hundred um, if you uh, agree yes absolutely is that a motion to that's approve? a move move to approve Second. <laughs> roll call Hamley? yes sweating yes Hudson yes all right well thank you very thank you. much uh, Denise, uh, oh, I'm sorry. two questions yes. for you. First Go. off, the, the 1,450 <laughs> sublots, are those sublots that were approved in 2021? Yes. Okay, so you have any prognostication of what's looking you know, I have not heard. It's been a little quiet this last month. I mean, we had the 10, you know, agenda items in November, which was very much um, not a surprise. But I haven't gotten any... Um, sense for what we're looking at for 2022 just yet so um, I mean I know that there are a couple of preliminary plans that are in the queue to come through as final plats um, but um, there's a lot of um, um, there are there there you know and we had th four concept plans come through in November as well so in addition to the 10 agenda items we reviewed Four concept plans in November so that's a very good sign that we're going to have a strong 2022 as well um, and those four concept plans are pretty far along at this point so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some additional but we have our state route 94 corridor project that one mile um, area in Sharon Township that has literally five subdivisions even either in the preliminary plan stage or the concept plan stage so, so north of Wadsworth and south of Correct. It, it's actually south of Fixler Road. You can even, it's like a one mile corridor there that we're working also with ODOT on an access, a conceptual access plan. But, you know, it all indications are is that we're going to continue to see the trend, but <clears throat> I haven't, you know, received any kind of personal phone calls, I guess, to say, hey, we're, we're bringing this in next year, other than those concept plans. But I, I, I think we can also surmise from this that. Our building department will, if the, the rates are low, will be busy next year in terms of residential construction with right. 14,050 new lots, residential lots. And inspection. Next couple of years, uh, I mean, those things are going to fill. So that's a, they're the cutting right. edge. And that's the indicator. Uh, Andy Conrad and I were talking about that just earlier before the meeting, the impact uh, when it comes to not only building but also our stormwater uh, management department and so right. forth. The things that have to go into place for these new residential uh, buildings it means a, if the rates are low um, and people are still building, we'll, we, we've got the land already set aside for them. So, right, correct. Yeah. So my other question yes. is um, there are a number of townships that are at least talking about redoing their zone. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think a couple of them at least are working with OHM. Uh, we're having discussions with them to work on. Would there be any possibility I could check in on that for you and get back with you. 
Um, I mean, I'm familiar with OHM. Um, at least two of their uh, representatives are um, also working with the city of Medina. So I don't even know if there might be um, additional entities in addition to our townships, if there are some cities and villages that might be interested in that as well. But I can certainly check into that for yeah, you. There's I, I, like three or four, like you believe Westfield, I think Homer's talking about it. And there's yes. some other ones that are talking about uh, reviewing their zoning. Correct. And, so, I agree. Know, That's have, a good point. OHM is working with our transit department um, on their plans. Mm -hmm. and, um, so anyhow, I okay. just wonder if there's a way that we I can I can certainly, if it's okay, I can check into that yeah. for you. That's a great idea. Yeah. Right. Okay. Denise, right. I, I did want to bring up a, a, a part of our public record to indicate that the Planning Commission did review the, the proposal uh, for creating the unincorporated area for Senate Bill 52, yes. the exclusionary zoning, and was there any feedback you wanted to Yeah, provide? so regarding Senate Bill 52, um, that is the uh, wind and solar electric generation siting authority. Um, so yes, the Planning Commission did have positive feedback regarding our initial proposal of declaring um, all of our uh, townships as exclusionary zones. Um, the, the overall sense of the meeting was, um, or tone rather, was uh, in support of that. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Excellent, thanks. Uh, next up, we have Jim Dieter from Medina County Soil and Water. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. So I'm gonna pass out to you today. <clears throat> What I just passed out was basically our an annual report up through October from the beginning of the year. It kind of goes through our technical events that we've accomplished over the year. Uh, Eric did many of those along with myself and others in, this, in the office. Uh, I won't go into great detail with them, but you can see the numbers and stops that we had. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, the different townships and cities that allowed us to get some news articles, particularly about phase two into their newsletters. We certainly uh, got more of the, the targeted area that we want to hit with the phase two communities. And as you can see, uh, it's uh, quite substantial there. Uh, the back page kind of covers some of our financial statement at this point at through October. Uh, obviously, that number will go down by the end of the year in the next few months. Uh, public events uh, that we had uh, basically for phase two communities and also uh, just miscellaneous events and annual meeting they're all kind of graphed out there for you that uh, it's kind of a new program that we got and hopefully we could utilize that more to pass on cleaner information for you that mm -hmm. you can see uh, other things uh, I'd like to thank Colleen for hosting our annual meeting uh, worked out real well. I think it was uh, very well uh, attended, and uh, the the show with Medina Raptor Center was just uh, a great thing to see. Uh, we also introduced our big tree for next year, which is going to be the white pine, correct, Eric? And um, so that'll be next year's big tree. Uh, other things in the office, uh, we did uh, receive two grants that <clears throat> Abby Costello secured to do. Uh, additional education materials, particularly targeted toward uh, phase two communities. So that'll work out real well. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, as you know, I will be retiring at the end of the year. And, uh, and our, we did uh, find a replacement, which will be Eric Hange, will be our new district manager for the uh, soil and water office. And welcome, Eric. And, uh, He'll uh, go through some other trainings that the, uh, the supervisors want done, and he'll be uh, be doing that. So, uh, and I don't have, that's all I got for today. So. All right, very good. All right. Well, well uh, thank you, Jim, and thank you for your service to well, Santa County and the Soil and Water District. It's, it's uh, been appreciated and been, been fun to work with. And I, and I appreciate working with the commissioners and, and all the county staff on different things over the years. Thank you. Yes, you have a yes. good day. Bye now. You too. Okay, we have a few uh, commissioner resolutions, and I've got one uh, just general liquor announcement. Um, our first resolution this morning is uh, commending Patrick Grimes for 22 years of service to Medina County. 
Um, he uh, has been working with the Medina County Sanitary Engineer's Office since 19, April 19th of 1999. Um, he has worked well with, uh, with folks at the Sanitary Engineer's um, operations. Uh, good problem solving skills and comprehensive and technical job knowledge. Um, he has uh, just done a great job uh, over the years. And so the Board of Commissioners wish to recognize and honor Patrick for his commitment and diligent work during his career as a water distribution worker. Um, and he is commended for his 22 years of service with Medina County Sanitary Engineer Department. And the Board wishes to take the opportunity to offer best wishes for his retirement. So could I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweating? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Um, our uh, next three resolutions are appointing folks to various uh, committees. Uh, the first one is to appoint folks to the Banana County Floodplain Board of Appeals. And we are uh, appointing Jeff Brandon, Tom James, and David Williams to terms expiring December 31, 2024. The next resolution is appointing members to the Medina County Volunteer Peace Officers Dependents Fund. Um, and we are reappointing Fred Geisman and appointing Ken Baca, uh, both with terms ending December 31, 2022. And uh, lastly, we are appointing uh, commissioners alternates to the Medina County Planning uh, Commission. And uh, we are appointing Adam Esker uh, for Commissioner Hambly, Tom James for myself, and Cliff Nowak for Commissioner Sweating. Uh, move to approve all three resolutions. Second. Any comments? Roll call. Hambly? Yes. Sweating? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Um, and we have one uh, liquor permit filing this morning. Um, it is a transfer request from Medina Grill and Pub LTD to Medina Wing Company LLC, DBA Buffalo Wild Wings, located at 5050 East Point Drive, Medina Township. Dino, Ohio, and this is for a D5 and D6 permit, uh, which is a spiritus liquor for on-premises consumption, beer, wine, mixed beverages for on-premises or off-premises and sealed containers until 2.30 a.m. And a D6 is sale of intoxicating liquor on Sunday between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. and midnight, or 11 a.m. and midnight. So we are not requesting a hearing on it. That is just for the, uh, the record. Um, so, before we go into our discussion session, Steve, could I have a motion to go into executive session? Yes, uh, I would move to go into executive session for the purpose to discuss imminent litigation, to discuss security matters, and to discuss the compensation of a public employee. Second. Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Herb. Sweaty? Yes. Hudson? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them all. Yes. <laughs> One way or the other. Um, okay, so we're going to go into discussion session now. Does anyone wish to address the board? executive session. Uh, we will come out of executive session and adjourn our meeting formally at that time.
So we are out of executive session now, uh, back into general session. Uh, we do have two uh, discussion items related to ARPA funding. Um, the first is related to the uh, Veteran Services Office. Uh, they have a request for about $400,000 that uh, they need an answer on so they can pursue other grant opportunities if available. Um, it is to renovate their uh, ad addition to their garage to add a walkway and uh, additional meeting space at their facility. Uh, so I don't know if you two have had an opportunity and to Amy, look this at qualifies. It. So what I would recommend that I could do for you is uh, similarly to what I uh, just did in terms of the uh, jail parking lot, I could cite sections and let you know how I do believe based on the increasing uh, space because of their increase in And I'm, I'm supportive of the, of the project provided. Obviously, uh, we, it is covered or qualified for the ARPA. I am too. In the um, in the initial sheets, I went back and looked at them. It was there was a specific section that was identified mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. under which they, they qualified. But if we could right. verify that, that would be great. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Um, and then the uh, the next item um, is again ARPA, and it is uh, the jail parking lot. Um, and there are actually a number of different uh, things that are listed here. Uh, the jail camera system, human services, well, I guess that's not the jail. Uh, but anyhow, the jail parking lot in particular uh, does qualify under ARPA. Um, and so the question is, do we want to proceed with that particular project as an ARPA project? And, uh, yes. I would say yes. Yes. Yeah, I, and I, having reviewed, thank you for, so much for that level of detail. Um, I didn't at first understand how or whether it could, and so yeah, I think there's it, sufficient water issues. Yeah, yeah well, well, I know. Right. Yeah, but it's just not generally water. But you you have yeah. to do a bit bit more. But I, I I agree that that's going to from the engineering perspective that that is how they're going to approach, and I uh, I agree that it, uh, we should support it. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, so Amy, if you could get back to us on the. Veteran Services offices, um, then we can let them know maybe next week if we formally approve it. Then we'll move forward. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. No. Nope. Anything else? Nope. Move to adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Amberley? Yes. Sweaty? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you, Brian. You did a great thank job. You. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Have a great week, and we will see you next week.